Hello and welcome to Manthano Parenting Conference. Uh, my name is Karen, Karen Uroma, and I'm the CEO of Manthano. And it's such a privilege and an honor to have Dr. Trent and Carrie here with me today. Hello, both of you. You're welcome to Manthano Parenting Conference. Well, thank you. What an honor to get to talk to you, to get to talk about the blessing and, and an honor for me to uh, get to be doing this with our oldest daughter, Carrie. And uh, Carrie, thanks for jumping in with us. Yeah, we're, I'm excited. <laughs> yes. And uh, I'll just introduce. Today we have Dr. Trent and Carrie Trent Stageberg. Dr. John Trent is the president of Strong Families an organization committed to strengthening marriage and family relationships worldwide. Dr. John Trent is the award-winning, best-selling author whose recent books include Breaking the Cycle of Divorce, Heart Shift and Leading from Your Strengths. He and his wife, Carrie, Cin he and his wife, Cindy, sorry, have been married for 30 years and have two daughters, Carrie and Laura. Carrie Trent, who we have today, is a public speaker and the CEO of Strong Families. She co-hosts the Strong Families podcast and has co-authored the book with her dad, Dr. John Trent and Gary Smalley, titled The Blessing, Giving the Gift of Unconditional Love and Acceptance, which we'll be discussing here today. So welcome once again. I, and, and I want to just start off by asking um, a question I ask all all our speakers. What really inspired you to write this book? Well, um, I'll, I'll go ahead and jump in on that. Um, I think a big part of it, uh, Karen, was uh, me growing up in a, in a single parent home. Uh, my dad bailed out when I was two months old. I never met him until uh, just before I went to college. Uh, we didn't grow up in a family of uh, faith, unfortunately. Uh, so, um, so I was just you know, angry and, and broken and uh, just, you know, actually I was kind of typical of what goes on today, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so much brokenness out there. And then uh, I met a, a great young life leader. Have you ever heard of young life works with high school kids like me that were incorrigible and, and uh, anyway, great, great guy. And, and uh, that's when I really heard about Jesus and mm -hmm. gave my life to him and went on to, you know, study counseling. And I was actually working. So it's a little bit of a long story. But with that background of brokenness, I decided what I'm going to go into counseling, because you know, it's cheap therapy. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, and good therapy. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, uh, well, man, I a physician heal thyself, you know, I get to I get to learn more that can help me. Well, I would been I'd been in a psychiatric hospital. I was working in my internship all day, and for about five hours, I'm sitting next to this young man, and Carrie uh, and 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 Karen. He had um, he was in the hospital. He had tried to take his life. He would have succeeded if his roommate hadn't have come back unexpectedly. I think by the hand of God, frankly, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, called nine one one. And so now he's in the psych hospital. And he was a senior in college, okay? And he had just gotten his first B as in boy, not D as in dog, first B ever. And mm -hmm. in the US, you know, so he's a four point student. I don't know exactly how they do grading there in the UK, but you know, he's he'd never gotten a B in his life. He gets a B in a non-major PE course and he could not go back home and face his dad and say, I didn't get a 4.0 like you. And he literally tried to take his life. And that sounds really dramatic. I understand that. So we're sitting there and I'm trying to understand, okay, well, what, what was it? And it was like he had missed something. It was like, okay, because I didn't, wasn't perfect, like my dad, I'm not going to get something, but there was no name for it. Well, that night I go home. So it's, you, you work 13 hour shifts, you know, if you're in a hospital setting, and so I get home and the next morning I'm doing a Sunday school class on the book of Genesis. And uh, our class was, and I open it up and it's two twins, Jacob and Esau. Remember, remember them? And one of them gets something from his dad. One of them doesn't. And that's the blessing. 
And it says when Esau heard the cry of, you know, when, when Esau heard that he would never get his dad's blessing, it said he cried out with an exceedingly great and bitter cry and said, bless me, even me also, oh, my father. And I'm telling you, Karen, it was like literally like scales fell off my eyes. And all of a sudden, I mean, because how many times have you read about Jacob and Esau in the Bible and one kid gets the blessing and one doesn't, but after sitting next with that, next to the young man and being in the context and count, all of a sudden I realized, oh my gosh, what he was, what he was saying to me. And he was, was, you know what? I'm never going to get my dad's blessing. And when he did, he cried out and I began to then say, okay, what is the blessing? And and Carrie, now, you know, we work with couples and families all over the country and, and world. And um, I mean, the blessing is just, it's, it's uh, not just something for, you know, parents, uh, it, it is, and grandparents. Uh, but boy, I, I mean, that, that whole idea of blessing someone uh, mm -hmm. is right at the heart of attachment and uh, really all that we do. So it really came out of that, you know, my own brokenness, some watching somebody else's and then running into scripture and realizing, oh my gosh, there's this huge gift that we have. And uh, 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 we can either choose to give or withhold called the blessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're right. Even in the Bible, we see so many um, of our, what they call our forefathers, Abraham, who you know, even as they passed away, they made sure they blessed their children. Yeah. 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 So what then is the important, you've said, okay, the blessing. And so, and the importance of blessing the families. So what are the five components to a blessing then? And how can you explain, explain the impact it has on everyday parenting? Yeah, go ahead, Carrie, jump in. Yeah, I can jump in on that. So, you know, every time, like you just mentioned, every time in scripture that a blessing was given, there were really five things that happened. And so that's that's really the five elements of the blessing. So the first one is um, spoken or written word. So the blessing was always a verbalized. Actually, I lied. I'm sorry. Going back, I, I apologize. I'm super pregnant and I'm super sick today. So my brain's a little a little foggy, so bear with me. But the first element is actually appropriate, meaningful touch. The second one is spoken message, but appropriate, meaningful touch. Mm -hmm. And really, you know, that's the laying on of hands in scripture, or putting your hand on someone's shoulder, holding their hand. And there's so many studies that talk about how touch is so important, not only to our level of attachment, but even in healing, you know, NICU babies that experience touch heal so much faster than babies that don't. And, you know, so there's just that incredible benefit of touch. So that's the first one is appropriate, meaningful touch. The second element is spoken or written word, which again, is it needed to be verbalized. And we hear this all the time. And Karen, I'm sure you do too. Well, I know that they loved me, but they never said it. Mm, and yeah. the blessing needs to be said, whether you write it down or you verbally say it to someone, it was something that they could carry the words that they heard that they could carry with them. Dad, do you want to do three? Yeah, we'll just run through the five real quick and then maybe circle back to, again, the importance of this. So as people are listening, just do a mental checklist. So did I grow up in a home where there was appropriate, meaningful touch? Now, today, people are so you know, afraid of any, you know, even appropriate touch, do you know what I mean? Because there's just so much inappropriate and it's, it's, but man, I'm telling you just the, again, like Carrie said, the laying on of hands or, or that appropriate touch, and then it needs to be verbalized. Well, what do you say? Well, the third element of the blessing is you say words that attach high value because guess what the blessing literally means all right so karen you know i'm going to do this it's a little hard because i'm sitting but what am i doing i am bowing before you okay now you know you have a, a royalty in in the uk you know so the idea yeah. of bow the knee i mean americans we don't dip our flag at the olympics i mean we don't it's not part of the culture but biblically, guess what the word bliss, blessing literally means in Hebrew? It literally means to bow the knee. So here's somebody attitudinally that we think is really valuable. Now, that doesn't mean you run out with your kids right now and bow to the, you know, they're going to go, mom, dad, what's going on here? This is weird, you know. But that attitude, okay, you're really valuable. But there's another picture in scripture. 
and it's adding a coin to a scale. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? So in other words, you, with your attitude, you bless somebody by saying, man, you are so valuable, but then there's certain actions. And so like, and it's like adding a coin to a scale. So you add your touch, you add your words so that mm -hmm. they know that you have um, that high value. And then boy, when a kid really believes that Carrie, that then go on to number four and number five, because yeah. And, and like the, you said, I mean, I think the great part about attaching high value is we always tell people to focus on character traits. You know, what is one unique thing you see in them that God is using in their life um, yeah. or using to bless other people? It's that unique character trait that God has created in them. And, and that leads to the fourth element, which is special future. Because, you know, like my dad said, when you believe that you have these gifts that God has given you, then you have a purpose. You have a plan. God has a plan for your life. And I'm just convinced that special future is probably the thing that's most under attack today. Because yeah. if the enemy can convince us that we don't have a purpose, that we're not valuable, that we're, you know, he, he can just knock us out of the game. And I know for me personally, um, you know, the blessing came from my dad from that place of brokenness. I mean, I grew up with the blessing, but it's still a choice. We still have mm -hmm. to choose to receive that. And there was a long season of my life where I didn't. And I had walked away from the Lord and my family and ended up in an abusive relationship and everything that I had been told about myself, truth that I had been told about myself was completely dismantled. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget during that season, um, a rare occasion, I ended up meeting with my dad. I had pretty much cut off all contact with them, but for whatever reason that day I, I met with my dad and he gave me a list of 10 truths about who I was. And at the time I didn't believe them, but mm -hmm. the next time something happened that made me question that I remember going in the bathroom and pulling out that list and going, okay, somebody sees this in me. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's really what helped me realize, okay, maybe there is hope. Maybe there is a special future for me um, in that. And so that's the fourth element of the blessing. And then the final element of the blessing is really just kind of wrapping it all together. And we call it genuine commitment. And that's just saying, Hey, I'm going to be there for you. Not only do I believe that God created you in a unique way and that he is an incredible purpose for your life, but I'm going to be there for you. And I know, again, for me coming out of that season, you know, my parents didn't enable, they had great boundaries with me during that season. But when I was ready to come home, you know, my dad just said, Carrie, it's not about where you've been. It's about where you're going and gave me his blessing. Mm -hmm. And knowing that I could come home and that I had that safe place to return to and someone was going to be there for me. I mean, mm -hmm. that was what I needed to really get moving towards the Lord and towards others and and into the incredible future that God had for me. Mm -hmm. I think what's even coming to my mind right now is the story of the prodigal son. Yeah. You know, when he was about to leave, the father actually did bless him. You know, and when he was in his dirt, he 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 had to think again and said, "You know what? My dad does love me. You know, despite <laughs> what I've done." Yeah. <laughs> and that, exactly, and that enabled him to take the very first step. So if there was no connection, he would have been believed the thoughts, those negative thoughts that were just roaming in his heart that he's no good, yep. you know, he's, he's, he's sold, his spoiled his life and all that. So I really, I think I identify with what you've just said. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, and you, that's so true. If you don't choose to believe what the Lord is saying about you and those truths, you're going to believe the opposite. And that yeah. really can totally derail you. Um, yeah, absolutely. Especially, especially in the, in this um, generation that we're growing, that our children are growing up, there is so much in, outside influence, so much yeah. that they're yeah. speaking to them constantly. Yeah, and so Kerry, you said that you've had the blessing modeled, and 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 I know you were about to share. It, so how did it really impact your life? You know, I think growing up with the blessing, like I said, I mean it it made a huge difference growing up, but it was still a choice. And I think that's the thing. It's a choice to give the blessing to someone. It's also a choice to receive the blessing. And for me, it took a long time to really receive it because that starts by receiving God's blessing first. 
And I know to me, the Lord felt incredibly abstract. It wasn't that I didn't think he was real. I just really struggled with how does he have a place in my life? And how is Christianity not just a bunch of rules, but an actual relationship? I just really wrestled with that. Um, and so, like I said, walked away from the faith for a while. And then, you know, through that, um, you know, that season of abuse is really when the Lord drew me back to him. Mm -hmm. And, and it was really the blessing that allowed me to start healing. It was that permission to say, okay, I can come back to my family. It didn't mean that we didn't have things to work out and it didn't take time to rebuild trust and all of those things, but it really was the starting point for me to go, you know what? I have parents that are crazy about me that can see things in me, even when I'm not living those out and are, are going to be there to walk with me when I choose to do that. And so, I mean, it, it just has meant a ton to me personally. And then now getting to work with my dad, getting to share this, I mean, this generation needs healthy attachment. And that's really what the blessing is, is a model for creating healthy attachment. And if we're not create, if we're not attached in a healthy way, we're going to be attached to something or someone in a really unhealthy way. Yeah. And I think that also helps parents to become intentional. You, you have a vision for the reason why you're parenting. It's not just to correct behavior, we, which you said, I know we oh, that's one thing we do, but it's really to say, okay, okay, God, you've given me this child. What's the purpose for this child? What are the values? What are the characteristics? What are the characters that you see that I can begin to build up and so that they can begin to walk in it in faith, you know, and, tr and truly understand that they were created for a purpose, yeah. Yeah, and I, and I think you're right. And dad, you can probably talk about this a little bit more too, but there is that balance. You know, the blessing is not just all, you're great, you're awesome and grace. I mean, there is that element, but there still is an element of you have to be a parent. And like I said, my parents didn't enable, they didn't, you know, subsidize my bad decisions or behaviors that weren't acceptable. But I knew that that acceptance hadn't changed if that, you know what I mean? So you can still love somebody and be crazy about them, but have really good boundaries and be a great parent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so well, how would you, um, Dr. Trent, how would you, for people who are listening right now, who never grew up, because I know you said you, you, you didn't have that opportunity to grow up in an environment where the blessing was uh, modeled to your practice. And some may even be living in an environment where it's really um, toxic. So, you write about this in your book and, and you say, what will you say to such people, especially for people who are feeling inadequate or hurt or going through some form of emotional turmoil? And I, and I know many people are even at this moment with the COVID and having to really. Um, yeah, yeah. With well, just yeah, uh, particularly with all the isolation and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, let me tell you, social distancing as important as, as it has been, it is incredibly, makes life so difficult uh, and so hard and it cuts off so much of, you know, I mean, there's only so much you can do on a screen, you know, or, or just with no one there. Well, um, here's the thing. I think when you miss the blessing in Deuteronomy 30, there's a great verse that says, um, you know, Almighty God gets the nation of Israel together and he goes, um, behold, I set before you a choice. This is Deuteronomy 30, 19. Life or death, the word life means movement. Okay, are you going to move towards me? Choose life in me. Because once you get life in Christ, guess what? He gets you moving towards yeah. others. Okay, but you don't have to choose that. You can choose death. Death is means to step away. So we look at couples and families all the time and are they stepping towards each other, life over, or are they stepping away, life over death? But then there's blessing over curse. Blessing is to bow the need. You're, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna add to your life. I'm gonna add that coin, that word and that touch and help you understand your strengths and uh, that you have a special future and that I'm gonna be there for you. But we don't have to do that. We can have people in our life that, and the word curse literally means to dam up the stream. So when some of us grow up with, so my dad, you know, took off when we were two months old, but I thank God for my mom. So my mom did a great job of giving us all five of those elements of the blessing. And I think that's number one, what we can look at is not just who didn't bless us, but who did bless us. So I did have, for example, I mentioned my mom was awesome. 
Yeah, and she's her. actually right there in that picture. So oh, that's, right. <laughs> that's grandma right there. Yeah. And um, and then uh, the young life leader that led me to Christ. But can I give you a quick example of why this is so important, this whole idea? Um, Virginia Tech is a big university here in the States, and they have a, uh, but by the way, in Plymouth University there in England, they replicated this study. Okay. Um, they did the same study. And so picture this, uh, at the Virginia Tech um, uh, campus, there's a really high hill right on campus, you know? So what they would do is, is these college kids would walk by, right? And if you're a college kid, who doesn't want to be in a clinical study, you know? So they'd grab them. And, and so if it was somebody, they were looking for people by themselves, and then they were looking for people that were a pair. So it could be two roommates, could be somebody dating, but so they'd take the people by themselves and they'd say, Hey, you want to be in a study? And we'll give you a pass at a, at a class. Who doesn't want to miss class to be in a study, you know? So they'd say, okay, sure. And he says, well, this is a visual perception study. And so they're looking at this big high hill and they put a big 45 pound backpack on them, which is heavy. Mm -hmm. uh, think about your Marines, you know, they're, in, in the UK, that's about a 65, a combat paddock pack is about 65 pounds, a lot of, but so 45 is heavy, you know, it's maybe not as big as the army, but it's really heavy. So they'd put on this big backpack and they'd say, okay, you got to climb up that hill and they would measure and guess what the people would do without, ex without, ex they would overshoot, they would say the hill was higher and it would be harder to climb. So now watch this. Now they would take the couple and they made sure they gave them a little attachment questionnaire and they'd say, all right, you guys are really, so it's not like they had never just met. These were people that had your back mm -hmm. and they'd say, okay, so uh, we're going to put that 45 backpack uh, pound backpack on you. They're going to put on a 45 pound backpack and they're going to put their hand on their shoulder and they're going to climb the hill with you. And guess what? The hill shrunk. Wow. And I think when a lot of times when we miss the blessing, then we look at life and we think, man, I'm doing this all alone. Mm -hmm. I, I have to climb this big hill. And boy, what we need to realize, you know, Jesus says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Mm -hmm. And when we realize, and this is what Plymouth University uh, did there in, in uh, England. So they replicate the study, right? So there's a high hill. They put people there, put on the diodes. They're going to get them to perceptually. But they said, that, but look, listen to what they did. They go uh, in England, they go, okay, we want you to just think about mentally who's somebody in your life that you could put anybody next to you and have them put their hand on your shoulder. So the people weren't really there. See what I'm getting at? It was the memory or it was a person that they knew that was that loved them, that blessed them, that had that commitment for them. It could be the Lord. You see what I'm getting at? And guess yeah. what? The hill shrunk. So our words of blessing, and this is what I think with Carrie, you know, we tried to bless her and she's easy to bless. She's an awesome kid. And we're so grateful God gave her to her. But then there was that period of time where she was struggling and kind of like you said, the whole prodigal thing. But we, she knew our words of blessing were still there. And it's just like you said earlier with the prodigal kid, you know, when they come back, you know, he's thinking, just let me eat the, you know, I'm dying and I can't even eat the, I, I want to eat the same food the pigs are eating. And <laughs> my, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to go back and just be a servant. And he comes back and is welcomed as a son, oh, yes. or in this case, a daughter. So I think that's what our words of blessing do is mm. instead of doing life alone and what's huge today, loneliness. Loneliness, yeah. Okay. Mm. And we need those people of blessing in our life that are going to put our their hand on our shoulder. Now that, now maybe they're again, you know, maybe they're across the country, you know, or they're in Ireland or they're in the States and that, but it's that person that you put their, your hand on their shoulder, you know, Hey, they would climb that hill with me. Mm. And, uh, Carrie and I teach people, and I'm, I'm serious, every kid in every home deserves to know that there's at least one person in their life that's crazy about them. Mm. And every kid in every home deserves to know that Jesus is crazy about them, mm. that he's got his hand on their shoulder as well. 
So that's really what we try to do with the blessing is say, okay, every time it was given, there were these five elements. If you didn't get it, you're going to, it's, you know, it can beat you up. Oh Lord, I'm all by myself, you know, but the Lord, your God turned the curse into a blessing for you because the Lord, your God loves you three times in that verse. It's the Lord, your God, your God is the one that says, man, I'm, I'm here for you. And when you realize that once you get God's blessing, you can give it to somebody, even if they never gave it to you. Mm, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really, that is true. And um, another thing which we um, also say, um, leading on to that, is that um, in our parenting masterclass, Nurturing the Heart um, of a Child for Leadership, which I believe this is what the blessing does do, one thing we encourage people, um, parents, like we've rightly said right now in this um, session, is that even if a child grows up in a Christian home, it's not a guarantee, really, um, that they will accept your faith, yeah. And so, Carrie, I believe you, you were beginning to share that story, and you talked about the dark challenges in your life. Um, so, based on the fact that um, it's important, based on the fact that you've talked a lot about connection, and also of a parent being intentional, how did that support you? Yeah, you know, I think, you know, the Bible says train up a child in the way they should go. And when they're older, they will return to it. And I, I firmly believe that the Lord is never going to stop pursuing your child. You know, they have a choice. And, mm -hmm. and that is an incredibly hard thing. You know, like I said, I'm pregnant right now. I'm not a parent yet, but I, I can already tell, you know, just from walking with friends and with other parents through what they're going through and all the coaching that we do. I mean, the fact that your kids have a choice is incredibly challenging sometimes. I mean, so, you know, and I know there are multiple times, dad, where you and mom are probably like, just do this. Like it solves the problem. Just do this. Um, but you know, God isn't giving up and, and I'll tell you, I mean, if the Lord, the Lord literally rescued me out of that situation and he's not done with your kid. So if you, if that is your story, you know, we're here, we would love to help you and pray for you and, um, all of those things. But I mean, God's not giving up. And I always talk about the messy middle, you know, and that's really that five years was, was a messy middle for me, but God knew the end point and he wasn't done with the story. And so I think, you know, again, as a parent, you need to do, you know, my mom and my dad, they went to counseling, they got to help the help that they needed, um, and, and dealt with the things that were coming up for them. So you have to stay healthy yourself, um, mm -hmm. you know, and have hope in that journey. But you know, really, it's surrendering that to the Lord and letting him do the hard work. And, you know, we, we work a lot with people in addiction and recovery and abuse recovery. And, you know, I think sometimes the reality is, is it gets worse before it gets better, but God really is taking care of them in each of those moments and, and is trying to draw them back to him. So he's not giving up. You don't have to give up. We're not giving up. Um, and again, I, I think it, it really is that choice, but if and, and no parents, perfect, no kid is perfect, but there's, there's hope in that journey. If he did it for me, I can only imagine what he can do for other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and you, um, Dr. John Trent, I mean, you, how, how did you feel when your daughter was going through what she did? What can you, what were the things that you had to do to encourage yourself as a... Well, I mean, I mean, for, first of all, um, it's easy for any parent, you know, to sit there and think, okay, um, this is never going to change. Mm -hmm. They're never going to come back. They're never going to get better. They're never gonna, you know, we all have such high expectations. Uh, but I think, again, the thing that helped us tremendously was, was two things. Number one is, is I realized in my own life, um, okay, I didn't grow up in a Christian home. So, you know, we were brought home by the police several times. I was kicked out of grade school. I had to do uh, several laps in high school. Um, but guess what? The person I was when I was 18 isn't the person I was when I was 30. Um, we talk a lot about, you know, just relational intelligence and the whole idea that um, just the way God's formed our brains um, for a lot of kids, you know, it, 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 picture this, you know, just the whole frontal cortex and the whole limbic system, the way God has designed us. 
you, 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 when you're young, you uh, are certainly willing to take risks where you're, the part of your brain that's not developed really well is the consequences part. <laughs> yeah. so I, was, I was taking plenty of risks, but I wasn't <laughs> thinking, oh my gosh, but my, here's your parent and they're realizing it. So it's okay to be, you know, we, you know, there's times you're sad. There's times you feel like, oh my gosh, how can, you know, I'm writing books on parenting, but what, uh, so you should, your kid should be perfect, but actually that's what we never tried to do and put that on Carrie. Now you guys were, you guys were really great about that. They, they never, I mean, you let us be our own people and never put that expectation on us to be perfect or live up to something. You really let us be who we were. Well, have your own personal journey. Yeah. And that general commitment to say, okay. Cause I think my mom was, uh, and I tried to do this with Carrie too. Uh, I mean, my mom was telling me, uh, none of my teachers were telling me I was going to be worth anything. I'll put it that way. Okay. Cause I have a really mm -hmm. smart twin brother. Do you have a smart brother or sister? Karen, are you, are you the smart I'm the smartest in the family. No, no, no. <laughs> my, twin brother, my twin brother's an MD, PhD. He's brilliant. He's a cancer scientist. I called him just a little bit ago. I asked him, hey, what are you working on? And he goes, you wouldn't understand. And um, so it has something to do with cancer. Uh, but I, guess what I heard a million times growing up? Why can't you be like what? your brother. I, I must have heard that a billion times from, from, uh, cause I, I graduated. I, I mean, I got into junior college on probation. I got into college on probation. I got into seminary on probation. I got into my doctoral program on probation. There's a, there's a pattern there. <laughs> so, uh, so, okay. I'm not as smart as my brother, but my mom never put on me that same, you know, you have to bless kids, you know, uniquely they're different. So Jeff was, you know, uh, you know, I, I never felt like I had to be, she just did a great job of saying, okay, here's your strengths are different from your brothers. Here's your path. It's, it's not exactly where I'd go, but you know what? I believe God can, can still make a difference in your life and is, and, and it really makes it, it really makes a difference, but it's not easy. And, and certainly there's times where there's tears and heartache and, and guilt. Why wasn't I a better parent? Why couldn't I have, but you can't live your kid's life for you, them either, but you can, again, hold out to them that put, keep your hand on their shoulder and say, well, I know it's tough, but man, the Lord's there with you. We'll be with you and, and trust the Lord. Yeah. For, and to, and to give you a practical example, example of my grandma and how serious she was about how unique each of her boys was made, you know, when she passed away, um, you know, my dad was over cleaning out her apartment and she had this bookshelf and on the top bookshelf, she had a subscription to heavy equipment digest for all the big, you know, equipment machines, you know, for construction, because my uncle at the time was in construction. And then she had an entire shelf that was genetics research and magazines. And um, she even took a 101 genetics course so that she could talk to my uncle about what he was working on. And then she had, you know, marriage and family books and therapy and theology and different things like that on a third shelf so that she could talk to my dad about what he was doing. I mean, she studied each of her kids and what they were interested in so that she could build that unique relationship with them and help them use their strengths where they were called and how they were called. And that takes energy. That takes effort. That's a choice, you know? Yeah. 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 Wow. 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 And we, we, as we can see the fruits of, 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 of it today. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah. So, um, um, look, just looking at that, really, um, you, I love the story of Uncle Max and um, how he gave you a blessing. Yeah. And him not being your bi biological father. And I think the story resonates to me that I truly do believe it. It does take a community um, to raise a child. So um, can you elaborate how? Yeah. What, uh, um, I, I think, you know, for, for some of us, like my dad was an old third Marine division guy in world war II. I've got a couple of planes behind me. He was at a place called Guadalcanal. And those pictures are of some planes that I have a friend that flew, um, 
that's where he flew, uh, was at Guadalcanal. And those are pictures. My dad was a ground pounder, was, a uh, was, a uh, infant infantryman and, uh, came back from the war, hating God and man and, and just broken and tried to drink away the pain and never could. Okay. And there were a lot of people like that. And there still are today with PTSD. Now we call it PTSD, but back then they didn't really have a label for it, you know? So he bailed out, but even when I met him, he was not a, very nice person and could care less about us. And then I met Uncle Max and uh, I was in school at, in Texas and I walked into a library at Southern Methodist University and there was a, a, an office and, um, and Karen, guess what was on the office? So I'm, I'm like, I'm going back in the bookshelves, but then here's the library staff and here's a, and it was all like, kind of like four um, glass office where the front of the whole office the was glass okay so you could see inside and here's a guy sitting at his desk and it says robert m trent and uh <laughs> head librarian okay and the door was open and so i just stuck my head in i shouldn't have but john trent right i stuck stick my head in and i go hey uncle bob i'm your long lost nephew john trent uh uh, from Arizona and just wanted to say hi. And I was a total joke. It was just like, our last names were the same. I just thought I'd throw, and his jaw drops open and he goes, are you Joe Trent's boy? That was my uncle. So I had stuck my head in just as a total joke into his office to say, hey, I'm your long lost nephew. Well, I was, in fact, my, <laughs> my twin brother, Jeff, his middle name is named after Uncle Max. But because we didn't know our dad, we knew no relatives on his side of the family. I didn't know we had relatives in Texas. Do you see what I mean? <laughs> and I walked right into my, it was actually my great uncle, my dad's uncle. And, um, but we became kind of like best friends. He was the closest thing I think I ever had to a dad um, and loved, loved us and blessed us. And he was the one that told me about my dad and how he, what he was like before he went into the war, what he was like afterwards, what was going on with him. So I never heard it from my dad. So I was really able to forgive my dad by learning his story. Do you see what I'm getting at? From Uncle Max. So I not only got the blessing from him, he helped me. Do you know what the word forgiveness means in, in Greek, in the Bible? It literally means to untie the knot. The word luo for forgiveness means to untie the knot. And I was the one all knotted up inside. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Uncle Max, again, was, you're, you're right. He made such a, he not only gave me his blessing with that touch and just being being there for me, uh, but he helped me do the hard work of understanding, well, no wonder my dad, my dad never got the blessing from his dad. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then he goes to war and I didn't know any of that. I didn't know any of this stuff, any of the things he had been through. And so it was so helpful. So yeah, you're right. I, you know, I hope everybody has an Uncle Max, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or chooses yeah. to be an Uncle Max. Oh, chooses, I what I was about to say, or oh, chooses, because we all have that responsibility to yeah. really, you know, look out and, and know that we can be an Uncle Max. We can, you know, even sometimes you find out that in homes where you've got step parents and, and stepchildren or you know, in a, in a home where um, there's a lot of um, clashes between the parent and child relationship, there yeah. is an Uncle Max somewhere, you know, that, you yeah. know, is able to yeah. listen. And just to throw out a little practical story on that, it's never too late to be an Uncle Max. We have um, a bunch of blessing groups that are running all the time. And there's this one group called Nanas That Bless. And it's all these grandmothers that are, you know, 70 plus that are walking through the blessing. And we got the coolest email the other day. And without going into too much detail, there was this one Nana who has a neighbor who had just lost her mom, who was really struggling and struggling with gender identity and so many different things that were going on in her life. And this woman has just said, I'm going to be uncle Max to that girl. Mm -hmm. And it's, I mean, it is never too late to be an uncle Max in someone's life and to give them your blessing and to choose to walk with them. And man, can that change someone's life story? Mm -hmm. But yeah, I want to be part of Nana's that bless. I'm not old <laughs> enough to be in the group, but I really want to join because they're so cool. <laughs> 
Amazing, amazing. Oh, thank you so much. I really, truly enjoyed this session. And it really, and I, and the, I think the story of the blessing really resonates with me in the fact that it's so important, especially in the time that we, and in the season that we're living in now, yeah. you know. Hey, can really, we close, can we put a blessing on you, Karen, and each person that's going to watch this at the conference? So uh, how, how about that? Let me, let me pray. And uh, I'm just going to put my hand out and I wish I could put it on your shoulder, but, but Lord, I just thank you for Karen. I just thank you for putting her, putting together this conference for her commitment to families and really helping them not in just the master courses, but just in her own family uh, that she's committed to be that person of blessing. And so we do pray that for each person that watches this Lord, this isn't missile science. These are five really basic things but they build a level of attachment, Lord, that can help us understand that we're loved, which can help us understand your love as well. Amen. Harry, close us, will you? Yeah, Lord, and I just pray for every parent out there right now that you would encourage them, Lord, and that you would just show them how you are fighting for their child, that how you are pursuing your child, God. Whether it's a great season or a challenging one, Lord, I just pray that your hand over their child's life would be so evident and that you would give them peace. Um, and wisdom and, and just the ability to trust God that it's the messy middle, even on the hard days or the hard seasons, it's just the messy middle, God, and you have a special future for each kid out there. Um, we just love you, Lord, and we praise you and we thank you for what you're doing to create love and attachment in this world that so desperately needs you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. And uh, thank you. Amen. All right. All right. And for parents, um, we have a link at the um, bottom of this um, video. Please do um, go on to the link and get this, this story and um, book. It's a wonderful book and also links to other resources um, from um, this organization. And it's been a really great session, but there's something, and I don't even know how I'm going to start this off because <laughs> I would like you to please give us a take home activity. Sure. Yeah. What can we do now, really? I mean, and we've spoken a lot. So just yeah. based yeah, on that's that. a great question. I think, you know, really what, what I'll do really quick, if that's okay, is just walk you through really quickly how to give a blessing. And then we do this in the blessing challenge on our website, but it's really very simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so the first thing is pick one person. So start, we always recommend start with your own family. So, you know, your spouse, your kid, um, you know, and, and work your way through the family, but start with one person in your family. And then what you're going to do is you're going to pick one character trait. So like we talked about earlier, when we were talking about, you know, attaching high value and special future, you know, what is one unique way that you see that God has made them? And again, if you need more help on this at theblessing.com, um, we have a list of character traits in the blessing challenge to get you thinking. Um, but what is one character trait in that person? And then just give them your blessing. And it doesn't need to be fancy. It doesn't need to be formal. We have tons of examples, again, for how you can do that. But literally, all you need just to do is sit down and just say, hey, you know, I, I see this character trait in you. You are so valuable to me. The Lord has an incredible future for you. And I'm going to be there to walk with you um, as he develops that character trait in you. So it's really that simple. One, two, three, and in a minute and a half, you can give someone your blessing, mm -hmm. um, and write it down if it makes you nervous and makes you uncomfortable. But, um, and then one other thing you could do, if that still feels like a really big step, one thing that Joey and I, my husband do every night before we go to bed, and it's a great thing to do with kids as well is to just say, hey, what is one way that you bless me today? Or what's one thing I saw that you did that I really appreciate? And, and take that time right before bed to just say, hey, you know, I saw how you shared with your sister today and you're so good at including others and in what's going on. I mean, it's those little things, just calling them out as you see it and making it really a part of your life. So parents, we've heard this take on an activity and I am going to do it myself. So I want you to please just share your experience, share your testimonies, put it in this um, platform and let's learn together. Let's, um, you know, be encouraged um, from the testimonies that will come up from this take home activity. So once again, um, Dr. John and Carrie, I'd really like to say thank you so much for being a part of Montano Parenting Conference. It's been an honor having you. 
and thank um, you. thank you. Good what fun. an honor for us. This has been amazing. <laughs> So much We're fun. excited to watch the other speakers. This is going to be great. I know. I've, I've watched them, but I'm going to rewatch and rewatch it. There is so much insight. <laughs> so God bless you all and please stay safe. Bye bye.